Hello and welcome. My name is Jeremiah and today we'll be doing an S-Files demo. We'll cover both our standard and enterprise features. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at testdriveteam at sfiles.io. You can also find all the supporting documentation for any of the configuration parameters we talk about today at our website at sfiles.io. Here we'll go to Account. You can set up S-Files on any object inside of Salesforce. In this case, we have it set up on Account. And the concept behind S-Files is one record to one folder inside of SharePoint. And in this case, we don't have a corresponding folder. So when I click Set Up with SharePoint, what S-Files will do is it will go out and create a folder for this account. In this case, you can see we've named it Cogswell's Cogs, which matches our account name. You can set this to any piece of information inside of Salesforce, including a formula field if you need to concatenate multiple pieces of information together. Some things to take note of right out of the chute is we're able to create folder structure at the time of the initial folder creation, and this is useful if you want to present this type of structure to your users. We're also able to create subfolders as well. The final thing to take note of on this screen is that we are also able to take metadata at the time of creation. In this case, we're taking the status and we're able to stamp that inside of a metadata column inside a SharePoint. As your users interact with Salesforce and use S-Files day to day, they're going to want to upload files. And so you can do that by dragging and dropping these files and they get uploaded directly into SharePoint. There is no middleware with S-Files. It is your Salesforce talking directly to your SharePoint. There's nothing in between. So we can see that these files are uploaded. And if we click this handy button open in SharePoint, we can go right to the containing folder. And we can see here that these files are uploaded. We're stamping that status active as we talked about. And we're also, in this case, stamping the Salesforce ID on the files that get uploaded. This will be useful when we talk about community in a few moments. So anything is possible to stamp from Salesforce into SharePoint at this time. The same thing's true if you have users that upload files directly into SharePoint, which will happen from time to time, I'm sure. You can see that it gets uploaded, but it doesn't have any context of the Salesforce record. If we go back to S-Files in our account page and we click refresh, we'll see that that file is visible instantaneously because there is no caching. So when you're refresh s files it goes out and pulls the contents of that folder and displays it to the user this is also a good point to talk about permissioning sharepoint is the authority for permissions on what files and folders are visible to your users your users are authenticated through s files using their office 365 user and if they don't have visibility to a file or a folder it will not be displayed here inside of s files One of the most common use cases we see is to mimic a Salesforce structure inside of our folder structure. So if we hop over to an opportunity where we have S-Files also set up on, and we create a folder here inside of our S-Files Enterprise opportunity, we'll see it makes S-Files Enterprise, and we'll go ahead and upload a couple of files here. And once that's done, if we go back to Cogswell's Cogs and we look inside of the Opportunities folder, we'll see that there's one new item listed. And there is our S-Files Enterprise. And here we can see the containing files that were uploaded against that opportunity. And the same thing's true. If we open in SharePoint, we can go directly to that containing folder. Here you'll notice we're not setting status as this is being uploaded through the opportunity. And you can also note that it's stamping the opportunities ID here. But we can notice that it is making that folder structure, Cogswell's Cogs, Opportunity, S-Files, Enterprise. You can do this type of nesting folder structure, or you can have opportunities flow into a separate folder if you desire. There's a lot of flexibility with the way you configure S-Files and which folders you point it to and which ones you don't point it to. With S-File Standard, you're limited to a single document library inside of a single site. Here you'll see S-Files Demo is my site and my document library is Documents. In our enterprise version, you do have the ability to link to multiple sites and document libraries, and we will show that functionality here in a moment. 
Some other things to cover under S files here as it pertains to interacting with files from within Salesforce is your users are able to click on these documents and open them and you'll notice it opens it directly in SharePoint preview. Then your users can open this file on online and take advantage of all the SharePoint features that they have available to them as far as live editing and managing permissionings and sharing via links. So here if we just type in test and we close it, it will save that and we can live edit it just like you would in SharePoint. Some other features that you have available to you here is you can do rename, download, delete, open a specific file inside of SharePoint through that right hand drop down and you can hide these options from your users. It just does not restrict the permissions. Like we said, you need to restrict permissions at the SharePoint side in order for permissions to actually be removed. So you can remove or hide these. You can brand this to match your Salesforce environment. And that's basically the base functionality of S files. Now I would like to show you how we work with multi-site and site selection. And in that case, we have S-Files set up on case in our related account that we set up before for accounts and our related opportunities. So if we go to a case and we take a look at S-Files, we can present users with the ability to pick a site and document library. You can restrict this to be locked to a single site or to a document library. But in this case, for this demo, we have it wide open. So your users can hunt through the site and document library and find the one that they want to connect to. In this case, we'll go ahead and connect this to the account folder we were working on because we know what the contents are. And once we link that folder, we can see now the contents of Cogswell's Cogs account folder displayed here inside of this case. And what this allows your users to do is if you have multiple sites and document libraries that you want your users to be able to select specific ones for specific records, you can open that up as well. As an admin, if you want to pass as files the parameters systematically based on record type or other pieces of information, you can do that because basically what you need to do is stamp these IDs and pass them to S files, which you can find an article on our website about how to set this up to pass that information. But once you pass it that parameters, you can have S files systematically look at a document library for a specific record type, if that's your particular use case. The other way to overwrite these things, as we said, is via override fields, and you control those by editing them on the page layout. Here, if we click on the applet on the page layout, you can see that we're passing in some overrides, a site override, a document library override, and a root folder override. And this is how, as an admin, you control which document library and root folder S-Files will look at for a specific record type. So in this case, you would want to write formula fields that say if it's record type A, point to this document library. If it's record type B, point to this document library. And you do need to pass it these three IDs and once again you can find supporting documentation for this on our website. With S-Files Enterprise you can also put S-Files on the community for your community users to upload and download files. So we'd like to show you that and as we talked before briefly under Cogswell's Cogs here, we were stamping the Salesforce ID. And the way the community works is it takes community sharing rules and says, if a community user has access to this ID, then display files that have that Salesforce ID stamped on it. So if we go and we open our community, And if I log into my community as my experience user and I navigate to this account that we're looking at in working with Cogswell's Cogs, and here I can see two different applets on the community page. I have an upload section and I have a file visibility section or a list view. In this case, you'll notice that I can see most of the contents of that folder Items in this folder that I can see are controlled based on, like I said, this Salesforce ID. 
So let's say, for example, I wanted to remove engineering because a community user should not be able to see an engineering folder, but I want them to see the quick start guide. All I have to do is populate the Salesforce ID there and remove it here. And when I come back to my account and I click refresh, we will see that that engineering folder is no longer displayed and my quick start guide is visible. So that's how you control visibility inside of the community is you could set this ID or not set this ID if you didn't want it to be visible. Once again, we have supporting documentations about all the different ways you can configure community as far as this is concerned. And if you have any questions in particular to any of these items, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. The other option your users have is to upload files. In this case, they can select the file that they want to upload. And then once that file is uploaded, we can refresh our list view and we'll see that that file has been uploaded. When your users are interacting with documents, it does not open the file in a live preview for the users. Here your users will not have access to your Office 365 tenant, so their only option will be to download files or upload files through this component. There is a lot of flexibility as far as how you configure S files in the community. We've covered just a brief aspect of it, but you can make it match your formatting and your design parameters for your community page. And if you do run into any problems again, once again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Now I would briefly like to talk about our API. In the enterprise version, we do make our API available so that you can customize and automate certain actions. There's a whole host of things that you can do within our API. One of the most common use cases we have with API usage is presenting users with the ability to pick specific files for specific types for uploading. And I can demo a scenario of that inside of our account that we have custom built here. Let's say you wanted to present your users with the ability to upload a contract, whether internally or externally on the community. You can build a custom component here, which we have, which uploads the file, stamps this particular contract metadata, and then uploads that file from Salesforce to SharePoint, leveraging our API. And we can verify that that's happened here by looking at this folder setup that we just uploaded, we have that stamp contract, and it was uploaded by our system user in this case. And what this is doing is this is leveraging the API to take a file that's saved from Salesforce and move it to SharePoint with specific parameters. And with any code and API, customization is all over the place. You can make it do basically anything that you need it to do. And if you have specific questions about our API calls, you can go to apidocs.sfiles.io. And here under Client API, you can see the specific calls that we have along with snippets to help get you unstuck in your coding project. And if you needed further help than that, please reach out to us and we'd be happy to assist however we can there. The final thing that I'd like to show you is kind of a glimpse behind the customization for S files. I would direct you to look at our setup video that goes more in depth about this. But there are three different places you can customize S files. One is on the page itself inside of the app by editing the page and clicking on the app. You can see here are all the places you can pass S files overrides and you can find supporting information on our documentation regarding all of these. The second place you can find places to set up S files to configure S files is inside of our metadata settings. So if you go to setup and you look at metadata, custom metadata types, And SharePoint object settings and SharePoint settings are where all the information for your S-Files configuration lives. So in this case, if we go to account, we can see all the setup for account, including the folder structures and those permissionings that we talked about. They're all stamped here inside of the metadata types. And then finally, the last place to go and do 
configuration and probably the place you should start first at is in our install wizard. So if you go to installed packages and you find S files and you click configure, this will launch our setup wizard, which is where you will have gone through in our setup video step one the initial configuration and each additional object you will set up inside of an object setup wizard and there's also some useful parameters here such as the id search utility which allows you to find the appropriate ids for passing to multi-sites or to overwrite root folders so you can use this to find the ids you need and you can also find a hot link to our documentation and the ability to open a ticket inside of our support portal here on the upper right. Thank you for coming along on this quick demo of S-Files. As we've mentioned a number of times, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at testdriveteam at sfiles.io. And you can also find our supporting documentation on our website at sfiles.io. Once again, my name is Jeremiah, and thank you so much for joining me.